Oh, welcome. Uh, I'm Alan Weiss and Kelsey. So we're from Microsoft, and we thought we will speak about a couple of interesting projects that we've been part of. So I will be speaking about the Windows subsystem on Android, and Kelsey will be speaking about WSL, Windows subsystem on Linux. So uh, this talk is an idea to give you an introduction to what the project's all about and also talk a little bit about what we do with respect to Linux kernel and uh, you know, how you guys can probably get involved or contribute or help us do things better. So, uh, yeah, thanks. so uh, just a brief introduction of what WS, oh, sorry. <laughs> It's easier. Is this okay? Yeah. So, uh, just a brief introduction of what uh, WSA is. Uh, one of the things I mean, that I want to emphasize on here is WSA is not built into Windows. It's built on top of Windows. And uh, for whatever we're speaking today, I think Microsoft Windows is required. So, you need Windows to run any of these things. So, that's the bit. So, we run WSA on top of Windows. It's not built into Windows. And WSA is like another application on top of Windows. So we don't have anything that is modified in the Windows HAL or the Windows kernel to get this up and running. So it's just a simple application that you can install, double click, fire it up, and then you have WSA up and running. So we'll get into more what the details of the architectures and stuff a little later, but uh, what we also, uh, what, what makes this possible is Hyper-V for us. So we have to have Hyper-V enabled and then that's when we have WSA spinning up into a VM and the story there. Uh, so the, one of the other things that we, uh, what we've done uh, is to keep the AOSP as is and not modify it as much as I mean we want. We want to use it. We wanted to use stock AOSP so that when we move between versions, it's easier for us to maintain. Uh, we probably have a few uh, patches here and there for vendor site implementation, but most of it is stock stuff that's given to us by Google. So, yeah. That's, yeah. So, that's the story I was trying to tell you that it's built on top of Windows and not into Windows. I think the idea here is if we do have things that we put part of Windows and then when Windows moves or, or when uh, Android moves, we have a ton of work that we create for ourselves, which we didn't want to do. So, which is why the whole idea is to keep it separate. And that's what we have done. Uh, minimize changes into AOSP framework. So we've done very little changes to AOSP. And so what we have is a single MSIX uh, application that you can download out of the App Store, install. Sorry, out of the Microsoft Store, install, and then it's a completely independent package that runs on top of Windows. And uh, WSA is a product, not a platform. I think that's something we want to clarify to the world that uh, it's just a simple product which you can install, run, and play around with. Next one, yeah, thanks. So uh, this is uh, straight from Google, but uh, I just wanted to put it out there to say, look, all of this is just retained the way it is. We've not, I mean, of course, there will be a few modifications based on the uh, HAL layer. Uh, one of the things that probably we've done is to disable telephony completely. We don't have telephony right now, but if we do have it in the future, it'll be uh, basically a tablet with uh, telephony. Uh, also, I think Bluetooth is currently disabled for its own reasons. <laughs> right, so, so, but most of it is retained as is, and uh, we'll get into the next slide, which will talk about details of the architecture and what we intend to do. Yeah, thank you. All right, so this is where I want to spend a lot of time talking uh, about what WSA architecture is and oh, why we've done what we've done, stuff like that. So the most important things is what you see on the right-hand side here. Is it's, it's just a virtual machine that we launch. Uh, so one of the cool things here is we actually use WSL to launch 
the Android VM. Uh, and more about WSA will, uh, Kelsey will tell, let us know in the future. Uh, okay, so any which was, sorry about this. Uh, so th the whole thing is when we double click or let's say when we launch WSA, we have a Windows client application that fires up and launches the VM. So when we say it launches the VM, it's actually talking to something called the WSA service. So WSS service is a service that is built into the Windows application, the MSIX application, which takes care of launching uh, a virtual machine with its own configurations. So the configuration is probably like four to six GB of RAM and storage and stuff like that. And post that, that's, that's the only thing that WSS service does. And then there's a VM that actually boots up. Uh, so the component that's probably missing in in, in the diagram there is the Linux kernel, which boots up and then Android's launched. So this all happens inside of VM. And so, so that's the whole story about the WSA client, which actually is a very simple application which uses WSL2 to launch uh, VM. And then everything else that happens inside the VM is standard Android, right? So the kernel boots up, launches all the, uh, user space and then we have the app applications that you can probably install or run or stuff like that so uh, uh, in the diagram we have the android vm which i was just talking about and then this the slight blue box here is the win32 application that is a bundle of all of this right so it's a simple thing and and this is the application that you can actually install from the Microsoft Store. And so, uh, so we have one instance of it running. If you close it, double click, it's just one instance. But if you have multiple users, different users, and you know, each, there's an instance launch for each user in, in Windows, right? So, and then, yeah, you have the cleanup application to uninstall and stuff. So it's pretty straightforward. So what we also wanted to talk about is what we do uh, with the kernel here. So we also, uh, the fantastic thing that Google does is they give us a kernel. We, we currently on Android 13, 515. And every uh, month they have a kernel release with security fixes that comes out. So we move with the kernel, with, with whatever Google does. So we want to stay up to date with what Google's providing so that we have all the security fixes, but also we do have a few auto tree patches that uh, supports Hyper-V and things around it. Uh, so this actually runs on both x86 as well as ARM. So I actually can show a demo a little later with, with uh, WSA running on Surface Pro. So that's pretty cool. So, so we have these two platforms and so the kernel's like the core component for us and we rely heavily on Google. And of course we have the rolling LTS model, which uh, uh, thanks to Sasha, we kind of uh, got it implemented at Microsoft a few years back. So we follow that and then we do a monthly uh, cadence release for WSA. And all of this source and the config and how to build and play around with it is all available on GitHub. So it's, it's completely open source. and. Uh, you could just download, play around with and stuff like that. So what's this next slide if possible? So with that kernel component, what we also do have is the Android system side component. So we have all these images. And with that, we have these different states for the VM. It's either running state or it's those not running transition stuff like that. So all of this becomes a part of the package that we deliver out of the Microsoft Store. So it's pretty simple for an end user to just go click and then get, so it's all bundled for you. And then you could probably, if you, if you wanna play around with the kernel, you could probably build your own kernel, replace it, you know, do stuff. Yeah. So, and, so, so the kernel comes from Google. So right now, uh, I think we, we got the kernel just three days back, four days back. 
and we are on the latest uh, 2023 05 uh, 515 tag with uh, uh, it's 515.94 that that we have running on uh, the current WSA release and so the, the interesting bit here is we use this tag we have feature branches which we will talk about a little later which is the out of tree code and then we merge into merge them all into the, uh, the on, on top of this tag and then build release and this is available as in when Google releases this we take about three or four days to do our own testing and we'll check stuff and once that's done we we make it available on github for the end users and that's it's all there for uh, you guys to see I think we have okay all right so the whole thing that actually makes this possible is hyper-v so I just wanted to put out, put one slide out there to say oh, what 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 makes this possible and uh, we've used hyper-v for various different products and for us for WSL and WSA this component is the most important bit which is what uh, lets us do virtualization on Windows so it's a very brief of above diagram it's pretty much there for self explanatory but uh, we have all of this stuff that's shown here being upstreamed and most of it is already upstream so we have a team of fantastic engineers dedicatedly working on Hyper-V and making sure that this is all available on upstream. And then I think the model here is pretty straightforward for us as to if you report an issue with any of these products, for us it is to fix it upstream rather than you know have an out of free patch where we fix it locally and then carry it and say, okay, this is fixed, but carry that patch forward for every other release. Well, what we wanna do is to fix that upstream, pull it into every other product or put it into the main kernel that we use. Even probably pull it into uh, Google's, I think Google also uses LTS, so we want it to be part of LTS so that we base our work on the latest upstream LTS and we have all this uh, latest fixes and features part of that. So I think on that note, we have my last slide. All right. Oh, some of the features that we really love, I forgot this part. Uh, Thanks to Google, we have all of these coming in, but uh, I wanted to speak about PGO because uh, that is something we still carry as out of tree. Uh, it is the work done by Keys, and uh, we still have this as a separate feature branch which we merge in because this is not in Google's tree either at the moment. So with PGO patches, I think it was probably pushed in 514, 530, I'm not very sure. We've actually seen improvements, significant improvements. We've all we've gained boot times, uh, a lot of other improvements in the kernel. So we we carry these patches now as part of our official drop into uh, into the Microsoft WSA kernel. And of course, we have uh, the Google's development model that we really love, where we get all the security fixes and uh, we get all the CVEs fixed. And they also use the LTS and stuff around it so that actually makes us makes our job a lot more easier in terms of getting the end customers a stock android or wsa that's running on top of windows and uh, yeah so this is uh, our official github repository where we have uh, where we push the, uh, the wsa sources so we have this tags that you see we have uh, the, the internal project name is called latte so we have uh, Latte 2, which is the 5.15, and Latte is the 5.10. So we've had five, we moved from 5.10 to 5.15 recently. So we published these tags. Uh, it's out there for everybody to play around with it. Uh, so the, if you can actually come back and report issues to us, and then uh, we would actually fix that upstream and then you know, take that route of going into LTS and then into the Google stream and then back into Microsoft. So that's the whole idea of how we do things. Uh, if you have any questions so far, uh, that'd be, or I can probably take the questions after, after the WSL sessions also. Yep. Uh, 
Yeah, so I don't think we have any anything that's newly written. We use everything that's available in the kernel. So let's say, if, uh, for example, if you have to do an audio, uh, if you have to play an MP3 at, at the WSA layer, all it does is to call into the uh, the AOSP's APIs and then into the kernel, and then you have the fast HP socket that happens, Hyper-V socket, and then that talks to the Windows client that I spoke about, and that talks to the Windows HAL and just plays the audio. So we've not written any specific drivers or stuff like around it to make things working for WSA. We've stuck to the standard of standard way of how Google how Linux kernel does it, and then transition that from uh, AYSP to the Windows using the Hyper Hyper V and the Windows client and into the Windows HAL. So the the idea, like I told you, is like we wanted to keep everything stock so that when things move forward, we we move with with it very easily, rather than carrying our own out of street stuff and making life miserable for ourselves. I, I hope it answers your question. Yes. Yes. Uh, we've contributed back to upstream, which has gone into LTS and then into the Google Street and back into what we have. So yes, we have. So there are there are a ton of patches. I think most of our contributions have been around Hyper-V, which uh, uh, is the thing that we wanted to, well, the team at Microsoft works on. And of course, we've had a few bugs, a few issues with the versions of Surface Pros, uh, the version one and version two. I think some of them are still carried as auto tree because it doesn't make sense for us to upstream. The, the hardware is obsolete, but we still do test it on those hardware. But most of what we do on uh, Surface Pro 2 or Surface Pro X and above is all upstreamed. It's all part of uh, uh, Linux history. Yeah, so on that note, I'll hand it over to Kelsey to speak about WSL. And if you have any questions, so we could always do a Q&A after that. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah, controls. Hi everyone, so I'm Kelsey. Um, I maintain the WSL2 Linux kernel at Microsoft. Um, let me get over here. Um, apologize for the flashing screen. Um, if it does go out, I don't think there's anything too important on the slides. Um, we can talk through it. And also the slides are available on Sketch to download. So you can always reference that and I think we talk about um, on there just in case, but I think it will hold on. So uh, WSL is Windows. Um, the subsystem for Linux, um, that it basically, what it allows you to do is be able to run Linux in Windows. So you can it's, think of it kind of like a VM. It's actually, for WSL2, is running on a lightweight VM, but it's very integrated into Windows. Um, so what I want to apologize. Let me get a little bit of freeze brain while we're going through this, but we'll, we'll, we'll get through. Um, So you can run WSL instances um, within Windows. It allows you, you can run multiple. So if you want to run Ubuntu and Kali at the same time, you're able to do that. Um, it is integrated within the file system. So if you want to access your Windows file system within WSL, you can do that. Um, there is um, a couple different here. here. So as I keep saying WSL2, there is two different versions. Mm -mm -mm. So we have WSL1 versus WSL2. Um, WSL1 was the originally a released one. Um, so it actually was not in a VM. And instead, what would happen was how this was working was Linux subsystem calls would get translated into Windows um, subsystem calls. Now, what changed is for WSL2 now, it is running on a lightweight VM, which allows us to put in the full Linux kernel, which WSL1 didn't have. Um, that gives us the ability to also have full system call capability, which is great. So you can actually do things like this gives advantage like Docker, for, exist, for example, you're going to be able to run in WSL2. Um, there is also performance increases. So if you're working on large projects and performance within WSL2, um, that's going to work better than WSL1. Um, the one key 
point where WSL1 does have the advantage is if you are working across the OS file system. So let's say if you have a Ubuntu WSL instance and you are editing a bunch of files that are on the Windows side, you're going to see a decrease in performance on that. So you can still do it. It just is going to be a little bit slower on WSL2 than WSL1. But for the most part, you're going to see a lot more perks within WSL2. Um, so, all right, so here you can kind of see like a little graph. You can kind of get a vision. Um, do keep in mind, again, this is WSL2 only. WSL1 is not going to be, it's not going to have the VM or the kernel. Um, so once you switch over to WSL2, which, by the way, this, these are both available in the Microsoft Store. Um, you can download, you download WSL2, and it is as simple as running a command to be able to switch between the two. So these aren't, um, you can even choose to switch between them after you already have everything set up. Um, that is definitely an option. You just have to remember that you're going to be losing anything that you, if you customize the kernel or any of those abilities, you would be losing if you switch over to the first version. So, um, yeah, so you can kind of visualize here. Um, one thing to keep in mind for this is there is only one kernel that you're going to have for all of your instances. So you're not going to have multiple kernels on your system. So if you're going to have, let's say, for um, if you're going to have the Ubuntu, like let's say you have two Ubuntu instances going, a Kali instance going, they're all using the same kernel. Um, so I know I've seen a question being asked before if um, you know if somebody could customize two different kernels, like maybe they want to run a Kali a one kernel for one Ubuntu instance and a different kernel for another. It is one kernel, so you want to make sure that it's optimized for all of your, your any of your instances that you have up and running. But it is easy to change your kernel, um, which is super nice. Um, so instead of installing, you actually, you can still build your kernel even within WSL. And then you want to put it within a path that you reference within your WSL config. Um, once it references that, you restart your WSL and it's going to boot into that kernel. So it is very easy to be able to customize your kernel, do use your own. Um, maybe you want to use an upstream one instead of ours. Um, we do work to keep pretty close to upstream, but if you want to be on like, even do like Linux Next or keep with the latest and greatest mainline kernel, then um, you do have the option to do that. Um, yeah, a couple of these other points here, um, kind of as I mentioned before, is the increased IO performance. So that's within the WSL instances and then full system call um, capability with, and those are the advantages you get with the WSL too. Um, so to talk about a little bit specifically about the kernel, so we are using the upstream long-term support kernel. So technically right now, WSL, if you were to download it from the store, is gonna have a 5.15 kernel. Um, have been working to update it to the latest 6.1. Um, we ran into a couple couple bugs, so it's a little delayed, but I did just get a updated version released. So if you go to the GitHub, um, the new version is out. So it is now, it's not currently in WSL, but it is on the WSL2 GitHub page. So how this works is there is a WSL GitHub page and a WSL2 Linux kernel GitHub page. Um, they are separate. So I manage the kernel. Once I finish a kernel update, I upload it as a release to the GitHub. You're able to go on there, download it. You, you can, um, I do also include the, the configuration files on there, so what we're building the kernel with. So that way you can go ahead and take those same configs. You know that what we're optimizing, you can go ahead and change it and customize it, please, if you'd want to. Um, you can also then see what out of tree patches we're adding. So this picture that I added here, it shows a list of, um, Alan had mentioned earlier, we call them feature branches. Um, these are out of tree patches that are not upstream. We try to keep this minimal. And you can see in the list here, it's each one of these little things where it says like merged and it's gonna be a branch. These are all of our, um, all of our like feature or topic branches that we're merging in and each one's gonna have a set. So if you go to the GitHub page after WSL2, you can click into these and actually see what patches are getting added on top. Um, this way, you can see what differences are. Most of it is going to be documentation changes, things about WSL2, um, the configurations. We have like uh, the security one. It's like it's a document for Microsoft security. And then it's, there's going to be several like Hyper-V related things. So if you do run your own kernel, you want to customize. Um, I do recommend at least some of these, like the features, or especially if you do see a fix, um, go ahead and 
adding those on top of your kernel. So you can just at least come check what, what commits there are and then make sure to add those on because you can boot WSL2 and run it pretty well with just the kernel upstream straight out of the box. Um, I even recently tested 6.3, which is the latest mainline in that I was able to boot that fine, but there is gonna be some like Hyper-V things that you might run into um, just because of the additions we do um, that we have added on. Um, we try to keep the outer tree patches super minimal. Um, most of the time, if there is something we want to add on, we're going to try to push for it to be upstream. If it can't go upstream, generally we're going to want a very good reason for that. Um, so even like, I'm not sure if this one is pictured, there is a, no, the next release I did is right after this one I have pictured and you'll see like there's a fix, but it is actually in a later version. It's already upstream. It's just not on the 6.1. 21. So we're going to take them in, but sometimes if there is an important fix, if anyone's familiar with generally a normal, like how maybe Ubuntu or other kernels, like there's an important fix that's not in the kernel version we're doing, we're going to go grab it, backport it to ours. And then of course, once we do, or if we're going to update, it will eventually come. But we'll always reference that too in the commit. If you were to look at the commit, we'll say, oh, this was cherry picked from this commit upstream. So we'll always reference that. Um. So from here, a huge part of our priority has been wanting to stay as close to upstream as possible, um, contribute upstream as much as we can. Um, we haven't felt that we've been doing that as much as we would like to, and that's a huge goal for us to be able to do that more. So right now we've, Al and I both have increased our ability to at least be testing release candidate kernels. So release candidate kernels are ones that are getting getting really before they actually get released like for the actual update so if 515 if there's like some bug fixes um, that are coming up there's generally like a two-day period where you can go and you can test it's really it's announced on the mailing list we can test the kernel we can either give a thumbs up or we can say this broke our system or here's an issue and we can help debug it and it helps to catch regressions before a release actually happens um, so we've both um, started doing our best to any chance we get to be able to test these release candidates um, and also another huge focus of ours right now is increasing our internal tooling. We're trying to automate a bunch of things, increase our testing capabilities. So this way we can not only test our own kernels and our own products a bunch more, be able to catch regressions before we do releases, but also be able to do that upstream as well. So a huge part of it, of course, if we catch it upstream, that's going to be helping us and then everybody else as well. Um, the idea is once we hopefully have a better internal system where we're doing these automated tests and so forth is we're hoping to be able to have more time to be able to go upstream, help with backports that maybe had failed or got missed, be able to contribute onto the mailing list, whether it's reviews or also contributing ourselves, um, doing fixes and contributing new features as well. So um, that is our current goal that we're working towards. And we're definitely excited to be able to contribute to upstream as much as we can. And it's, it's absolutely a huge focus of ours. Um, so, and yeah, that is, that is it. Um, one thing I did kind of forget to cover at the very beginning was just kind of referencing uh, WSL and WSA. There is a lot of similarities in the way that they work and then the way that we also maintain their kernels. Um, so um, I did a great job like covering a little bit more of the architecture and like with Hyper-V and doing that. So. Um, that might be why I, I steer away from kind of trying to repeat too much on that. So, um, yeah, I guess any questions um, for WSA or WSL? No, wonderful. Okay, um, if you have, do you have questions or if you do actually want to see anything, um, I have my computer WSL on it, of course, and then I mentioned you have your Surface Pro. So um, with WSA programs on it. So feel free to find us if you have questions or want to talk about things or even poke around and kind of see how things work. Absolutely, we're more than happy to. So yeah, thank you everyone.